Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take another look at the trail arm. I've had a few players I coach online recently with the visual of the trail elbow pointing behind them coming into impact. So that's the pattern we're going to look at. So today might be a good one for players that want to improve compression, improve club face control and just improve delivery overall because the movement of the trail arm can be a really good influence on creating a solid impact position. Thanks once again for joining me. So today we're looking at the trail arm again based on a few sessions that I've had online with players recently where the players coming into impact, the elbow on the trail arm would be very much pointed behind them. So pretty easy from a visual standpoint to see how that might make it harder to get a a more compressed impact position, we'd have more control of the club face. So essentially what we'd want in the downswing with the trail arm is for the trail elbow to lead the hand. So the trail elbow would get to the hip just slightly before the hand gets to your trail thigh there. So that's what we're looking for. When the elbow starts to point behind, we start getting the opposite response there, which then often leads to the hand speeding up and we're losing the face control at the same time. So we want the elbow to beat the hand to the hip there. That's what we're looking for. And in doing that, you might notice how I have this nice amount of space here. So if I was to take my lead hand and put it on to the top of my pec here into my shoulder, I, I have that nice kind of space that I kind of maintain through impact. Whereas for players that get the elbow behind, you lose that space, the, the, the shoulder, um, the head of the humerus starts getting pushed up and forward and we lose that space. So it's a very different feel there. And that's what we're looking for today. And just before we move on to the, the two drills that I provided with the players is that we've got the reference there. We just discussed that feel of the shoulder and the elbow beating the hand. Also, you can use the hand as a nice reference to the club face because I find that when players go from this pattern with the hand there, they're used to having the hand move this way to manage the club face. Whereas then when you start getting the hand beating, uh, sorry, start getting the elbow beating the hand, the hand is now having to move this way. So it's a tricky one with players as far as managing. It's a, just a new way of learning how to manage the club face because they're used to from this position, the hand having to move this way. We start getting this, now we're going to have to do more of this. Okay, so it, you can see that when players are learning it, you, you're seeing the ball do what, probably not what you want to see at first and you're realizing like, oh, it's a learning process. I've got to learn where the face needs to be. To, to kind of accommodate that new movement. Okay, so the two exercises, dr drills, whatever we'd want to call them, I gave to the players were, I'll take you to the first one. So the, I start seeing this pattern where the right arm is taking over and we're not seeing enough pull from the lead side in a lot of cases. So a lot of the time when you're not getting a pull from the lead side, it's because of in the initial start of downswing, I'm not seeing the pelvis lead the rib cage enough. So when the pelvis rib cage, pelvis leads the rib cage in a nice way, you get a nice stretch on this lead side that then allows you to pull more with the lead hand on the way through. But without that pull from the lead side, the push of the trail side takes over. So to help the players to create more pull, what I would do is through backswing, simply have them reach with one hand as far as they can get this way. And you can see already I'm pre-setting there, my pelvis is closer to the target than the rib cage. So I've created more stretch in the backswing to help the player. So when they go into downswing, they're gonna get more pull across that lead side to, to just really delay the, the trail hand from, from taking over with the push. So in the downswing, we have that that pull and that push of the trail hands, you want them working in unison. So if we see too much push from the trail arm, it just really shows we're not getting enough pull from the lead side. So first thing I had the player so, like reach out with the lead hand and at the same time as doing that, just to make sure they're in a good place to turn through and have them reach with the lead hand, create that situation where the pelvis was a little bit closer to the target than the rib cage. I'd get them to point the butt of the club at the ball so they're on a, a pretty, decent plane there to be able to turn through. So they're not having to worry about, you know, shallowing the shaft or anything like that at that point. Let's just set them on a, on a nice plane to just rotate through. So from that position there, I'd have them put the trail hand on, just build awareness of what that feels like. And then I would have them without a ball at the start, just swing through and see if they can actually like 
control a finish position. So with a lot of players, I try and encourage them to swing through to three quarters. So we're there, we're in that position working on, and just hold it in a mat, just to get an awareness of good sequencing. So we'd start there, and once they get comfortable, then we'd pull a ball in place, and whatever pace they wanted to try it at, I always encourage players at first to start a little, a little slower, and have them rehearse it, and then they're just gonna go through and try and hold that three quarter finish. So those were, that's, that, that was step, or I should say drill number one. We're gonna to go to that position where the lead arm is pretty much parallel to the ground. We're gonna get a good stretch across the lead shoulder. And then from there, we're gonna try and get to a three quarter finish where we're nice and balanced at the target. And from a sequencing standpoint, that would help them to hopefully get the rotation they need from the body to control the finish. So a very um, intuitive way of getting them to actually get the bigger segments to, to pull through more, to, to, to take out that push of the trail arm, okay? Uh, the other thing I had the players do, along with that, to help with getting more pull from the lead side, was just single arm swings. So drill number two, I literally had the players like, can you chip at the target, but I want you to control the finish, because if I don't turn with my body, it's gonna look like this, and my lead arm is gonna very much separate from my body on the way through. And we're not gonna control the finish, we're gonna get a very high finish. So I, being very specific with how they did it, I wanted them to, can we go to, let's just say about hip high, and can we finish at about hip high on the way through? And when I go hip high to hip high, what you might notice is, is that now I'm in a position here, where again, we were talking about the space between um, the trail, let's just say pec and shoulder. Now I'm talking about the space on the lead side here. And you can see how there's a little bit, the lead arm is closer to the body. There's more space in here. Apologies there if I touched the mic. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's what we looked at there. So can we hit little pitch shots? You don't have to hit these too far and just control the finish there. And little exercises like that, I would, I'd encourage players to do. Um, hit a lot of those little pitches with the left arm when you're warming up, and then transition to, okay, now I'm gonna get more reach. I'm gonna get the awareness of how that feels to my trail arm to be on there. And then from there, I'm gonna use the stretch to pull me through to your finish. So you've got your two drills there if you wanted to improve that trail arm and you wanted to work towards um, a better impact position there where, you have, where you're not getting that compensation through impact. Uh, couple of cool little drills there. Let me know if that was you and you try some of those out and how they feel for you. Be interesting to hear if they help any other players.